We've watched the news and we've seen it happen in the schools, in the supermarkets, in the high-rise buildings. This scenario is going to be really focused on the healthcare worker. The best way I can put it is this is going to be a high-intense, high-energy drill that's going to really run you through the gamut of what it's going to be like in an active shooter scenario. The active shooter drill is bringing together best practices so hospitals can come in, see what it's really like to be in an active shooter environment, and then being able to take these best practices back to their organizations. But one of the unique things I think about this conference is rather than just being presenting a, a dialogue or presenting uh, material, is that we're going to have an actual live scenario. Even knowing that I had an active role that I was supposed to confront him, with my patient, but the moment he pointed the gun at me, I couldn't confront him, even knowing it's a drill. I still can and then he shot my patient. The active shooter scenarios that we have designed are designed to be realistic for the setting. We have designed it with participants staged throughout the area, throughout the emergency department in scenario one, who will represent doctors, nurses, medical staff, visitors, and patients. There's going to be high drama, there's going to be high emotion. They're going to want to help people. And by having a focus that refined, you tend to forget the most important thing, and that's protecting yourself. Our participants, some of them, have been informed as to their role. Others are going to react on the spot. And basically, we want to train people to become aware of their surroundings and to follow three simple words, run, hide, fight. Run, hide, fight. The uh, scenario is designed to be uh, replicating when a shooter comes into the environment and immediately starts shooting. This morning we'll start off with an orientation event for the attendees. One, to make sure that they're aware of exactly what they should expect as they participate in the training sessions as well as each shooter scenario. We have over 200 participants. We're going to have two active sites going at the same time. Um, there are the participants are going to be the role players as well. In addition to that, we have off-duty police officers that are role playing um, as the active shooters, as well as the infiltration teams. This is a very, very large event. The options are run, hide, or fight. The run will be simulated by uh, walking quickly and exiting the building. The hide will be wherever they can find a location to hide from a shooter. The fight part, we've simulated throwing objects at that person by using training uh, objects. We brought in law enforcement, we brought in a variety of experts, content area experts, resource information, compiled it and incorporating it to make it something that the healthcare worker can use and apply to ensure safety and security for all involved. At the end, we'll bring together panelists a risk manager, someone from law enforcement, safety people, uh, an RN, two emergency room physicians, and we're going to discuss what we learned today. They will have the opportunity to experience the drama that's involved. The average healthcare worker has never been involved in an incident like this. We know that every healthcare facility has got to make that decision regarding how do we handle this as a protocol, as a policy, because you'll find out that there is no cookie cutter um, policy or, or procedure that you can follow for any given event. 
it's truly going to be something that your administration will have to take that, that burden on to make that decision. How do we want our staff to react in this kind of scenario? And others similar to it. Yes, sir. In uh, military tactical combat casualty <laughs> care, uh, it's like Bill was saying, everybody fights in the beginning. There's no care rendered. We don't do CPR on the battlefield. Uh, everybody fights until the tactical situation is resolved. After that, then you have an opportunity to render care. I protected the patient. I obviously put my body over the patient, and then I got shot. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was trying to think, like, well, what would a family member think? The first thing I thought was, what was that noise? And so I got up to look. And then the, the second thing I did was run back and forth because I didn't know how to get out. When law enforcement does come in and take down the shooter, they actually took them down in our area and we were sitting, we were just like hiding until they, they were asking how many shooters there were and we're like one, we're yelling it and to remember to put your hands up. And I realized that he can't see me if I can't see him. So I closed the curtain and when I realized that he was systematically going through the rooms, I said, well, now I'm out of options, it's time to fight. So I grabbed the, what I was thinking was the IV stand pan or the uh, small grenade and waited for what I thought I could finally see, either his footsteps or the, you know, the edge of his uh, weapon and came out and tried to throw the grenade at him and confront him. These guys aren't looking for a fight. They're looking for easy targets. So if, if, you're, if you're presented with an opportunity, or you, it wasn't really an opportunity, you, you had the choice to make and that was it. Um, maybe, maybe you have to fight at that point. But, but trying to talk to me, coming down a hallway, and can we reason about this when you've just seen me dump two or three people right in front of you? That's probably not the best call. Room who escaped, they lived. They got out and they were in a safe area. Okay? Other people tried to fight. Sometimes that worked okay. Other times it didn't work very well, right? As soon as he started yelling at the at that area, I think we all noticed, and that's when we when we came out and closed the door. Right. Before he took off his first shot. So and then everybody worked as a team. So we took the belt off and we put it on the handle and it would be almost impossible for someone with one hand, gun with one hand, to pull that open. But the belt was a great idea, because everyone's hands were cramping up trying to pull up, plus with the belt, you can move away from the door and put your foot up against the wall. But someone made a great suggestion. And, 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 and you're right, and think about how your doors open in the facilities you work. Are they inward opening doors? Are they outward opening doors? At least you know if they're inward opening doors, if you barricade and you put stuff behind it, it's, it's a good chance the guy's not gonna make it in there. All of the players today came together through the Hospital Association of Southern California. We meet on a monthly basis, and when we came up with this idea, it was based on events that are taking place around the world. We decided that it was really important that we do something, that we pull this information together, that we get in law enforcement involved with us so that we can get the real expectation of what they're going to do when that awful or dreadful day happens inside of someone's hospital. What's important is that people really understand that this is a real event, that we need their participation and taking this educational component back to their associations so we're all prepared. At the end of today, ideally, we'd like the participants to go back to their institutions and develop a local plan that will work at their hospital. So when you know the procedure, when you know the policies, when you know best practice, you're in a better position to provide care. We hope that it never happens in another facility again, but we also know that reality is it will take place again. And hopefully, by training, by learning, 
by being prepared, the damage and the trauma that comes to a healthcare facility can be mitigated by your experiences here.